Stani sa ovirs, Zainaga, Aeon och Indi, Don Van Van Pasami, Princess Yukunayan, Titan Kronos 9, Dorothea Kirilova, Eunice Raya Chikawa, Mika Niko, Shinkin Kiyongoska. Dedicated in memory of my grandmother. Irene who died in 2002, may God bless her and give her a peaceful rest. Plays Master Eternal War Part 2. Written between 2011 to 2012. With the help of my friends. Matthew 16 28. As ye I can guarantee this truth, some people who are standing here will not die until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. A. A tilde a tilde one distant star that shines with the power of God, celebrating the life in the universe, home to warmth. One distant star that shines so far away in space engulfed in the cold darkness spreading its warmth to planets every plant and every animal carries it as light in its own court of the distant star I send you a prayer from the coldest depth of universe as a beloved creation of God made to resemble him please continue to give us the warm we need a eh? Atilda Atilda I dedicate this work of fiction to our beloved creator master of all that is seen and unseen the one that is watching over us from the past and continues even today the creator of our free will. The true master, God. May the light of knowledge and love befall on us living. May we be blessed in participating in your holy work, and may my small and insignificant attempt at describing your glory. May this small fiction world be blessed from the heavens, and continue under your divine inspiration. I want to dedicate this work to the Father and Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I ask you for help and guidance. I also ask you to acknowledge the works of our minds and heart in your favor. Atilda in the times of ancient evil 106 chosen people will save the world. That's why the CEOs considered it their duty to round up and catch the stray outcasts enslaving them. Using others for their personal gain, these were the kind that lived in the protection of this huge corporation's walls ignorant individuals seeking attention. This was their true form, they would sell everyone just to become more powerful. To gather all wealth was their only purpose in existence, instead of distributing it among the needy. They would keep all the resources for themselves until they no longer could be used. That is the stupidity of these that are manipulated by greed. For when you have too much, this makes you too burden. If you have too little this too is a burden. But if you have too much yet distributed among these that don't have anything, then you get R.I.D.D. of the burden, and gain able helpers. That will also protect what you have. Think of it readers. Analyze these words. Be like the horrors of the system is the stupid and most idiotic thing you can do. Don't follow the path of greed that doesn't give any rewards. Did you know that simple grains, mashed up squished create flour? This in turn mixed with water and baked makes bread. This is how by dividing or even diminishing one may achieve true success. Everything that claims to be above is in reality. Below for the world we see is merely turned upside down but we know everything from the beginning. Good is the opposite evil. So everything portrayed as evil by the horrors of this system is in fact good. Remember that in this story the other enemies were these CEOs. And this too is a portrayal of evil. That despite appearing to be weaker than Gale Mouth might actually be more powerful and sinister, for this evil came from ignorance, from greed the most dangerous kind of evil powers were gathered here, not in Gale Mouth's temple in fact, Gale Mouth evil could be even considered as mockery, he only made an unrealistic thing happen, that wouldn't obstruct anything, the CEOs however planned to kill and murder all, for the sake of money, who's more evil the corporation's leaders, or Gale Mouth, you don't have to answer yet, but can society be more evil than a single individual? Or is the all evil of the world only a work of individuals instead of the faulty, societary values? Chapter 1 As a awakening in the space even ah. Gods are symbolizations of our desires that are given human form by spirit world called Achelion. In order to clearly understand this sentence we must throw away all the rationalization created by the material world that engulfs us, like water in the ocean, making us fishes that swim beneath it not allowing us to see the image above the sea surface. We see the sky or a small fragment of it which we swimming in water cannot understand bound to the world that was covered in the water. This is the image created in our minds that explains the complexity of the idea. 
Humans see a fragment of reality to which they're bound, since that's what's necessary for most of them to exist. In fact showing them more than necessary might be destructive for them, and therefore there's a need for the barrier created by the surface of the water to divide both worlds, and for us. It's a key in the spirit world that connects our minds during sleep. This dimension is connected to a acting as a network combining all living beings into one and adding God to the equation. Of course this dimension connects more than just our mind, but being engulfed in this particular reality we cannot see the planes in which gods can be created. Because gods are symbolizations of our desires that are given human form by the Achaelian to produce more desires or offer an explanation to the situation at hand, a form of communication that can be understandable for us and which enables our interaction with a reality different from our own the diverse nature made the creation of spiritual tools a necessity. Despite God being linked to everyone not everyone possesses the right qualities to understand him. Another god and goddesses were therefore created ones to represent goodness others, to represent evil, and the world's ancient bipolarity was created as a means to communicate, testing, and refining our spiritual potential, and enabling us to grow in both worlds, and understand what paths to take. On the true crossroads of life, that is our decisions and ideas everything we create into being, both the material and spiritual, even the spiritual collapse is in fact only another opening on life. We are constantly influenced by forces not many of us understand or even believe exist. I once written in the past that some might be terrified by the truth, by the way the world really looks, but they shouldn't be, do not be frightened by things you cannot understand in this world, cause it's just a matter of time, and you will join life on that other plane, yes? There to exists life more real than you would ever believe, the keel in the ancient dimension that links to our dreams is indeed a very real place that existed and helped to shape the known universe in the ways not comprehensible to many scientists. HLI and pre eights even me it was created by God, it was his first creation that helps him to create new things and grants us the same power, Achillean is in fact the first spiritual tool ever created. Now what if I told you that you never ever existed in the material world? What if I told you that your true existence is somewhere else in Achillean? Not possible? Are you really sure? You all experience DEJAVU? If even for once in your life, you must have been stunned or even bewildered by this strange experience of a certain thing rewinding itself like as if it was a movie or a game world. How many of you saw ghost figures for example? Still thinking it's a lie? Well you never know it's too late to tell the truth from fiction, but you know? The world presents itself in a certain manner and Achillean is a spiritual tool used to control everything, the birthplace of all creation, everything could be said, and some things in these descriptions must be repeated, because saying it once wouldn't make you understand not a single thing would make sense, if said once, sometimes important things need to be repeated constantly in order to be understood. HLI is a depository of ideas, dreams, and illusions, consciousness, and many more elements that reside between life and death. This is its role, to block and suck in creative energies that could distort realities, but can be used to give birth to other realities, or even inventions and ideas. All beings in the universe are linked into a network of minds without even knowing we can communicate or catch a glimpse of distant worlds that exist far beyond our normal reach or even influence events their becoming gods of the afterlife, or influence other dimension civilizations into development. Therefore humans too can become gods, and are worshipped by civilizations that do not know the truth. Imagine the whole picture, see beyond your limitations. Humans and gods are alike, they are created from the same matter, and become different, and yet the same during the revolutions. To understand this. To grasp the whole idea, humanity to in a far advanced future will become gods in fact my tale of mega civilization is a vision from a very distant future, one possible path, earths, and other intel stellar superpowers development might take billion of eons of years in the future from the year you read, or listen to my tale. This story can become the truth as time goes on and billion of the Oz years pass such is the power of a creative mind enchanced by the visions influenced by God and Achillean, that time itself does not exist, once a being is swallowed by the abyss of Achillean time travel and multi-dimensional ventures are indeed a real possibility. 
in this far advanced future I opened my eyes having slept for 456 earth's hours, seeing the grayish darkness of an futuristic degraded apartment, my eyesight became clear after just few minutes, and I saw the green mold occupying the ceiling 4000 or more years this place was desolated, empty, and a bit dirty, as I slowly got off from a futuristic bed, and looked around. It was very quiet the rectangular room was abandoned full of graffitis that were painted during different time periods, there were mostly red or multicolored signs that occupied the white gloomy walls of the never finished futuristic complex that was supposed to become a multi-trade corporation but bankrupted because of the intergalactic stock exchange and became abandoned a safe heaven for us outcasts that are rejected everywhere by the corporative industrial societies. Outcasts mostly consist of poor workers that lost their jobs when suddenly big universal corporative complexes go bankrupt, but also consist of refugees that escape dominated planets or criminals described as space pirates, who also recruit from our people that also includes me, as this is my society, I too am an outcast. Some graffitis however can become inspirational, as the same white walls shown an incredible painting, that if it was made in the closed rich societies would be considered an piece of art, but instead was to be labeled as mere vandalism. It showed a man walking a yellow desert, in the darkness, above him a white pigeon was flying symbolizing freedom to these that are now oppressed an incredible and outstanding way, to give hope to these that are said to lost all hope. I was marveled by this sudden discovery, as I stretched my arms, and looked at my grey outfit yawning a bit I opened my black arm bag and took out a mini digital device photographing the painting, and then by pressing on the screen sending it instantly to billions of my comrades that added me as a friend in one of the universe's social network, smiling and answering the comments of different people, demons, and angels from all over the universe. I didn't know all of them but they too were my friends. I talked to them on the social site answering their concerns while watching some television and checking the download progress on that one space fight movie I so wanted to see but never had the chance or the guts to visit the corporative cinemas. That's why I used the Azile Galloway that was much more closer to my status as an disquisting terrorist and criminal. This only shown to me that despite the walls created by the official authorities, people, demons, and angels, of different races, that existed in the universe wish to communicate and develop relationships with each other, some of them make it even to the real world and ours official lives. All the while Claus Ellie monitoring the official medias and their propaganda sometimes laughing hardly from their idiocy, not knowing what dangers would be released because of that, I didn't even suspect my calm moments were gonna to pass and he'll be involved in a fight sooner than expected and on a much more grander scale. After few whiles I hid the device, needing to move and to get involved I standed on the floor and moved to the exit entering a very dark and rusted corridor, walking slowly constantly keeping my eyes open for an enemy that could lurk in the shadows. Life of an outcast isn't an easy one we live in a world left to fend for ourselves, and fighting is a skill that can become useful as we venture the darkness of these space heavens where no law and no authorities only the law of the strongest is obeyed in the world lived by poor behind the walls created by rich. I moved slowly in this seemingly unending rusted corridor, scanning for any trace of aura that could suggest there are others in the area, and indeed this place wasn't abandoned there were many life forms present some monsters, other human or demonic, rarely you could meet some guardians or angels this meeting however mostly involves a battle as they're sent here to fight demons, and I was a demon. The eternal war is a never-ending strife between the forces of good and evil however not always the good occupies the right seat, as in many cases the real good was seen here, and not in the world of the rich who call themselves to be just and good, but are only liars, cowards, and the cause of the most evil that falls on this eternal metropoly. There was a glim golden light that covered the hallways I was walking on, signifying that electricity was still delivered at least some small amount, that was made by the bankrupt Ted Corporation electric generators it was very quiet as I evilly making this place feel abandoned the floor was made of glass like material, and covered by a molten synthetic probably red carpet. The place was a bit dirty and rusty, as it really was abandoned 4000 or even few thousands years. 
Some noises were heard carried by the echo going through the walls metallic sounds telling me of that battle that took place on floors above me. The complex shook a bit as the battle must have been massive, yet it wasn't the one that was to be waged by the rich on us. This one was rather a very simple battle between two space pirate groups that waged their wars. Sometimes bystanders could fall a victim to it and that's why most kept away. Anyways it wasn't something that interested me as I entered the stairway and made my way down hoping to find a way out, hopefully get out the same way I entered few hundred or more hours before. We the outcasts use these abandoned places to hide from the corporations that would use us as slaves. Some are wanted criminals sometimes because they dared to stand up against the rich and once captured might even face execution. Some are very powerful demons or wanderers, like me, that travel from place to place ignoring the official world, that denies our existence, or makes us look as evil, insane monsters. Our lives were a bother for these that thought of themselves as masters of this highly advanced world it was quiet as I made my way slowly stepping down on the dark marble stairs looking at the red or silver walls that seemed to shine in every possible colors that could be imagined by my mind. Looking at the darkness below, I wondered about my path. Will I visit worlds covered in eternal darkness? Or will I see planets that bath in sunlight trying to remember the gardens of Lilith I saw 75 years ago during Gale Amouth's awakening? I really didn't suspect that event was only a prelude to something even more eventful an event that will gather all humanity, eternals, and gods into an incredible warfare for now it was awfully quiet, come before the storm. I slowly walked slowly observing the surroundings everything could happen just about now. In this precise moment everything was possible. The sound of pure void interrupted only by some metallic sounds gave an incredibly chilling atmosphere to this venture deep down into unknown as I went down floor after floor looking at the rectangular circles the staircase is made and how well attached they were to the metallic or glass like walls all thanks to the ancient engineers that made this complex thousand or more probably few thousands years ago it's an incredible thing to venture these modern ruins rediscovering their secrets. It was both a very dangerous and yet a very secure place where no authority or rule could distort the natural decay of this place. And this owned like other structures to become temples of commerce that would contain entire world instead became a decaying shelters from all oppression. Remnants of worlds and many structures that were to house billions now were used by these that had no home and were forced into eternal exile. Here they all could feel safe and secure, at least till the rich and money-hungry whores decide to destroy even these sanctuaries, like in ancient scriptures these that had all indeed had all, and these that had none had even less, the universal division, that not always would be just, but couldn't be changed, because the only way to have something is to take it away from someone or to be given that from someone that has more. Both ways strictly forbidden by these that were to rule over entire galaxies, yet some having been blessed by God could go above these sick rules and restrictions. Giving out freely without losing anything the universe has best known paradox, and yet possible, because this world was an illusion just like everything else. I was still going down into the darkness hearing all the metallic noises that came from above, wondering, as they become louder a bit, will these noises bring the battle to me? I wanted to avoid unnecessary troubles, but wouldn't avoid it if it came towards me, how many times my adventures would begun just like that? At this moment of time it was quiet as I looked both ways, and then returned slowly going down my way to the exit, to the platforms. To the shining metropoly where all stories would begin or end. To state the truth, I was hoping for some time to rest from both my mental and physical injuries. All thought I was invincible just a year ago before the events of this story I lost a mad hour battle with fellow outcasts like myself. We waged ourselves into a battle against the system trying to cause a huge rift in its financing and security industries. The banking platforms Estelda were our targets. The battle plan was organized 30 years before initial operations begun. We had a well-organized strategy and a leader full of charisma the legend Eric Coronis, warlord and criminal that controlled entire finances in the pack suit as a galaxy. Probably he too was a part of the system. Yet most of us saw in this a way to put a thorn in the society we detested and make some money of course. So we gathered into the army. 
created an organization, and were given our respective roles. I joined relatively late only five years ago, and perhaps my true potential wasn't recognized. I was assigned into one of the armies lead by our generals in the lower ranks. In that as day we attacked the left wing of the corporational building X894-23 Javeta Enterprises, along with groups 1987 and 2003 of the Syrinx Space Fleets which were to gain control of petroleum and electrofuels necessary for our operations. Yet the corporate armies combined with the guardians of mega-civilization and security fleets and armies from allied solar systems quickly gained an advantage in the major corporations and came after our groups. Battle lasted for over 1367 hours and caused irreversible damage to our ranks and morals. We were even labeled as rats by the official medias and the humiliating defeat combined with the loss of some of my most precious comrades from the organization, left a very deep wound. Despite my powers I couldn't interfere with the natural flow of life and death. Alpha and Omega strictly forbidden me explaining that it was a planned failure, that our leader was a traitor hired by my enemy the system. To make fun of us and criminalize all the poor. Alpha and Omega told me that it was a stupid mistake for me to join their ranks, that it was naive to think this could be accomplished. I made a terrible mistake in my judgment being deceived by the system into believing this huge well-organized army was an army, and not just an institutionalized slaughterhouse. A way of exterminating these that were unnecessary my goddess Alpha and Omega assured me that it wouldn't make any difference if I wouldn't get involved, even if I warned them in advance knowing the truth only few could be saved. Yet I think I could save my friends at least instead of joining a false and stupid ideological group. I should have taken them away from this nightmare and not just watch them die. This mistake hunted me from that time it was a terrible thing to bear. These thoughts couldn't just go away. Despite the fact I wanted them to leave me alone to just forget about it all I was supposed to be above. Why then I felt guilty and concerned about the way this world and every other was developing? Evil was hard to defeat and I wondered whether I too am evil or good. I guess I was both evil and good depending on the time. After all sometimes I could be very selfish despite my pact with God giving me powers that were unbelievable. I too had my limitations and knowing my borders wasn't a nice experience but could be very helpful in understanding myself and regaining my balance it was yet another lesson given by the master of all knowledge God even thought I would sometimes curse him this was supposed to be received and learned because it was my fate despite I created it myself it wasn't always under my control not all consequences might be foreseen not all can be planned sometimes we are surprised pleasantly sometimes the surprise is negative but it's all caused either by our or someone else's actions Therefore it's good to know your enemy even better than friends. Yet what to do if your enemy is the structure? Like society or the system that controls societies. My adventures are never simple. I'm always bound with issues that go deep into the surface of this world indeed for me to find a solution. Complex situations must be understood only that way I can reach and punish this story's true enemies. But sometimes they tend to manifest by themselves in front of me. I was reaching the lower parts of this dark staircase monitoring an aura that jumped very fastly towards my current position. Something was coming close and will manifest soon. What was it I wondered trying to guess the nature of this or it had so much energy, like a sparkle and unique encounter a girl slowly made her way down the steps, as a soft gust of wind came blowing and she brushed her pink hair aside letting out a sigh, it was another boring day here. She thought to herself, trying to figure out what she could do. Since all her actions has its restain under watches of many. She didn't have much freedom, shrugging and picking up her pace making her way down to the lower part of the dark staircase. Looking further down, she saw a slightly tall figure there, tightening her head and start to approach the figure. The figure which was me, as I looked behind and noticed the girl, smiling a bit and wondering what could I do with her. The gust of wind mixed with the metallic sounds giving a very chilling atmosphere. As EWHO goes there and I decided to speak hoping that she will reply in an own language, looking at the girl and trying to figure out from what race or planet she came from. Smiling and walking a bit forward hoping such a beauty won't become my enemy she slowly walked down upon hearing me talking as she brought her hood down and said done here? And you are? She tried to look at the figure which was approaching closer to her. Smiling I came very close looking at her face. 
The girl had a dark skin with a beautiful long pink hair, dressed in some kind of rebel fashion. I tried to look innocently. As he and my name is Blaze Master and I'm a wanderer. What are you doing all alone in a place like this? I said, laughing a bit, trying to make myself trustable. We standed looking at each other in this darkness, surrounded by the colorful futuristic walls. In the abandoned complex on this staircase, in the middle of my path to the exit, she stared at me from head to toe, feeling that I was a little trustable, but still with doubts. She nodded. Oh, a wanderer. Just trying to get out of some crowds. She said with a slightly hint of sadness. As she glances back at me, wondering if she could kill some time here. I on the other hand was surprised by her sadness, wondering why her voice had a sorrowful tone. Standing confidently all thought being a bit perplexed still not knowing whether she can be trusted or not. A ZWANA come with me I finally asked the question, hoping she would join and form an alliance with me of course I had other intentions as well my mind was full of pervy thoughts and the girl herself looked rather attractive. She tilted her head from side to side thinking of my offer. She chuckled and said, if you could ever get me out of this boring place then. She smirked a little and thinking to herself, things are going to be more fun like this. But still she had to be careful, not knowing what my real intentions were. I too needed to be cautious, but the girl appeared to be safe, she wouldn't cause problems wasn't even powerful and ought to hurt me, it would be better to form a team as we walked down towards mega civilization, and perhaps this relationship would even last for a while I thought to myself as e okay let's go, there's a battle upwards, and they might come here, we wouldn't want to be caught in their mess now would we I smirked a bit, and walked forward letting her follow me. We slowly stepped down on the rusty stairs listening to the metallic sounds coming from above. The sounds told us about the intensity of the space pirates battle that was in progress. It made me think so I turned my head towards her as yes, so tell me are you a pirate as well? I'm a traveler, a nomad. There's not much I can really say about myself and yeah, I laughed at trying to keep the flow of information to minimum, but expecting her to tell me a bit more about herself to gain an advantage a battle a, eh? she thought to herself. But battles are fun she said, while easily catching up with me she skipped her way down as she jumped on the metal staircase, making a loud sound. She smiles, I ain't really a pirate, just a normal girl. I smiled, and laughed at a bit hearing the loud noise as EYEA I can see that HAHA a pirate would know we need to keep quiet ok I explained, and grabbed gently her hand as we continued walking down in this darkness. I looked at the girl and was ready to believe her explanation, that's true she could be a ordinary girl, that got mixed up in all of this because she wanted to see the forbidden world. People and demons living inside the established order's walls, knew our world only from myths and legends, considering this place, to be full of different kind of romantic adventures, they leave their safety behind and embark on the journey becoming outcasts, only after reaching this place they realize the horrible truth, and while some are glad to know the truth, the others resent it wishing to return back to their comfortable lives not realizing the choices they made are irreversible. For these that dare to defy the system will forever become outcasts, and shall be portrayed as criminals. It's the truth, these that are locked inside the system are unaware, believing of themselves, to be free while being slaves, and thinking they have become slaves in our world, while they attained freedom, they simply do not realize how fabricated knowledge in their world is. Therefore I was ready to believe the girl that walked with me slowly, that she's just an ordinary girl, correction she was an ordinary girl, but no longer is, because now she will become special only will she realize why she's special, and what being special really means. As yes oh are you a runaway dear I asked the girl smirking as he while you entered a very dangerous place you know I continued to tease her, enjoying her childish knife as she puff her cheeks, as she continues to follow me, I just prefer to be noisy. As she heard the words run away, she starts to think about her past. She couldn't remember much of what she really was, or where she came from. Only remembering being here, with a blank mind, as many people starts coming in and out of her lives, and often unfriendly glares from many. I don't really remember. A dangerous place. She said, as she followed close to me this response made me curious making me realize there was another interesting mystery, and I so loved them.
But I had to see UTT at short hearing a huge loud noise, grabbing the girl's hand quickly as he LETS run I yelled as the staircase started to shake we quickly rushed down and made our way into the Near East Hall, while the staircase itself collapsed filling the hall we were in with black and grey smokes, the cloud entered it as we fallen on the floor with me quickly covering her back while the smoke rushed over me it was amazing, because the whole event took merely few seconds. Huge metallic and glass staircase collapsed in really few seconds, echoing throughout the whole building making me look at the girl, and smile as looks, like we'll have to find another way OUTA I said to the girl, while we lied on the red floor hearing the loud tumbling sound of metallic stairs, and broken glass, that suddenly collapsed. Obviously it was thanks to some explosion, these things happened regularly in such places, that's why it was both hard to get in and get out. I standed and helped the girl to stand up as we both looked at the place we found ourselves, in a rusty corridor gently brightened by red light despite seeing me lending a hand to help her stand up, she chuckled and got upon her feet by herself while sticking out her tongue at me as she looked at the mess being created again, these things are getting too often already. She said, while lying around the area, as red light shone. As ain't all battle feels like that I asked looking at her and then added as it be you day there is something to it, something definitely is up in the air, I can feel it looking at the rusty corridor which now was covered in a grayish debris, I didn't know what was yet to come, I looked at the girl, who was still teasing me scratching my head being a bit confused by her cheerful personality she nodded, yet the long battles always are. She looked around as the cloudly air came rolling in, and she looked back at the guy, who was staring at her. As a sudden chill of air came rushing in, her smile began to fade while letting a soft growl to slip out of her mouth. I smirked and looked at the girl as he oh you finally noticed I teased her a bit and then got serious as he oh why mister it's about time you introduced yourself a demanding in a calm manner looking at the figure. She rolled her eyes and chuckles of course I did. While glancing back at the figure and tilt her head. I wonder if it's gonna be fun. She said. As he oh sure you did it you him tell me, why don't I believe why oh you a I continued to tease her, and then walked towards the man as well, how long we have to wait to asking again trying to analyze the mysterious newcomer, being pretty much sure a fight would begun now the figure slowly walked closer to me, and as he ruffles his messy brown hair, and glances me from head to toe he then start to move closer, hey do you know something? He said, while pulling his collar, I am actually gay he stated. Suddenly I moved back realizing the danger I found myself in at the moment as he oh fuck. Listened on we got to run, run fast I grabbed her hand quickly rushed into the distance running in the mysterious corridor full of different complex paths, hoping we could lose this homo pervert somewhere in this mysterious maze of different trusted corridors. While Don Morelli blinked as she ran off with me, looking back and waving to the homo, it was nice to meet you, I love people, like you t-o-o-o. Don shouted while running off with me this place was full of doors, and different entries. It was supposed to be an office quarters for the luxury service workers and office people, there were even computer devices installed and standing on the futuristic glass desks waiting to be finally used, big servers rusted for over millennia as a true treasure house for us, as I smiled once we entered one of these offices and closed the glass doors, I quickly walked over to the office desk and looked into the desks finding some mini computer devices which I hid in my bag. Giving few of them to Don I secured her loyalty. As EWE hit the jackpot dawn, with these we can make money on the black market dear, scatter the office for everything you can find I explained myself walking over the huge safe trying to break its code she saluted to me, and chuckled, okay till the captain. She then went off with the many devices, and began to place it around anything she saw. While I sit down near the green rusty safe and took out another portable computer, pluging it with a grey grey while into the numeric keyboard on the safe and waiting a while, while the program sends some signals into the safe's security systems after putting away all the many devices, she then walked towards me while seeing me doing my job. She bent down near the safe and took out a device as a small but strong sparkle came from the tip of it. She smiled and said, solve the trouble, what is epic instead? Making me laugh, as she obviously didn't know the infrastructure or ZNO, if you do that, all the interface will go high wire, and I want to retrieve the lock, as well, do you know how much you can get for these kind of locks? That's a huge amount of points. 
I bet the safe stores just your average gold for some financial transactions. Why waste the price for something trivial as gold? Well, it's worth much only in either ancient or border worlds, but it's not easy to get there. Haha, <laughs> I answered laughing waiting for my device to do its stuff. Looking around and getting a glimpse of the office that wasn't ever used, currently the structure was dirty full of rust and dirt, but you could see some remnants of its once sterile cleanless in the way all the office gadgets were placed, a structure or order, not even once used. Not a single transaction was calculated by this office's advanced software. It's unbelievable that all this hard work went to waste, but it was a good hunt for us, who live as scavengers collecting items that were never used, trading them to these that willed to get them, but didn't want to go to the systems dealers. The office room was huge with about 67 or 45 desks, with huge holography call libraries I looked at Don and smiled while making myself clear as yellow okay around there's many items you can use for yourself or sell, go get as many as you can, you won't get another chance, like that, get on a move I ordered she heed my explanation, and just simply nodded her head, as she walked around the deserted office. She wander around aimlessly and look around for any stuff, that caught her attention. She sighed as she looked into her bag. A bag that was full of equipments and money, she shrugged and looked around once again my device finally beeped and I turned the safe's handle opening and revealing gold bars inside with some black binary equipment, taking it all from the inside and putting it into my bag, analyzing the four black mini computer devices that resembled a notepad having a screen interface. I turned one of them to analyze its compatibility and was overjoyed at the processing speed. As uranium powered commercial tablets with Refronia's CPUs, our luck amazes me, Don what you got I looked at the girl, as she was scavenging for some useful utilities the office was poorly lightened up, the earlier described rust made an acclord combination with green synthetic floor, some units were still working making a buzzling sound. The atmosphere of this place was unique, a chilly combination, the smell of death filled the area. I passed some futuristic desks observing their designs, they were white with nanotechnology built in, these desks themselves were actually computers units. Impressive technology made by the servants of the system for the servants of the system. Definitely not something that was to be analyzed by a mere outcast such myself, the desks were bordered by a golden light, which in fact was its transmitter, if the device would work properly it could transmit over gigadoids of informat in in mere seconds all over the galaxy. The air was dusty a bit as I walked towards a huge window from which the mega civilization could be seen, marveled by its size, all districts looked like tiny dots, white lights, yellow, red, orange all the colors of the rainbow could be found there. We were so above this eternal utopia that we couldn't even see a single human instead lights created by buildings or spaceships looking as tiny golden bugs creating a colony. It's surprising how humans and bugs are alike, both create colonies in which they dwell, and if the colony dies not a single one of them might survive. The eternal darkness that engulfed both the insides of the building in which we were as well as the outside, the eternal remainder of how far we got in our development, that there's no longer any limits for the societies to grow and thrive. Even for me the one that supposedly hates all societies this thought gave some mixed feelings, was it good or bad? That the society developed the way it did? Was the question that occupied my mind for the most of the time. I turned my attention to my comrade slowly making my way to her to see what she got. She then held up a couple of cooter chips and all, and the main one is this. She said, as she held up her hand, a mini robot rat. It began to move on her hand as she chuckled. I made this my own, there's a lot of gadgets here. She added. Looking at her and smiling, I actually wondered what she wanted to do with them. Actually it was just my curiosity, because the girl amazed me, she was always cheerful, and it was quiet, the entire building was terribly quiet, while lonely moments later one might hear these metallic sounds. As EID got awfully quiet, didn't it? I wonder what's gonna happen next I said looking at her gadgets, and smiling as nice straw face I added easing her a bit, looking at the ceiling I noticed a blue energy wave that was visible on it, the energy wave was passing it like a blue lighting. It was a very interesting and odd phenomenon as wonder what that was I asked on showing her the blue lighting, that to say, appeared after a few seconds. She puffed her cheeks and show the mini rat closer to me so it can bite you tilde besides this chips has a lot of unusual metal in it. 
she said, while blazing out upon the blue lightning, seems strong. A unusually strong, like a magical current weird. Why use magic? In a commercial complex I added ignoring the rat and looking at the rainbow colored walls, seeing how the colors on the walls created a different mosaic responding to different colorful energies that emanated from both the desks and floors. As Thai's building is built from a very peculiar structure, did you notice that the wall's colors change all the time? I asked again looking at the girl very carefully she tilted her head and looked at me, it does sometimes. Depending on how much the energy are, she said, while feeling proud, as the rat nibble around her hand and making a semi-loud squeal sound. See even Ratty feels that I am smart, she said, while patting his back. Making me smile, as I continued the conversation as yes, that is summoner, or just a normal pet asking about the animal that I didn't notice before the rat appeared only recently making it our newest team member. While I wonder about Dawn's magical abilities, us Uli pirates or people living in industrial complexes are well versed in technology, but it's rare for them to know advanced magical arts. Unless someone well versed in them taught it to them slow tumbling sounds were heard in the structure. The walls were warm, making sounds comparable to the flow of boiled waters. Perhaps it was this structure's heating systems. Perhaps we dealt with an advanced magical engineer. She smiles and said, it might be, but then it might not. So I don't know till the chuckles while a grin creeps on her face. Suddenly the doors are broken back and the glass fall on the floor. As we notice for tall dark comrade figures walking into the office through the glass doors. While me, the rat, and finally Don hide under one of the desks the dark knight walks slowly. Their dark red eyes gazed from beneath their hoods. Their dark armors were made from some magical metal, crafted to resemble steel or ethical human knights' armors. They took out their swords and started to destroy the desks, breaking them into pieces. As cleaning squad I asked whispering, as we looked at the desks being broken with incredible strength. The rat quickly crawled back into Dawn's jacket due to the loud sound. As she looked out, a rot squad indeed. She said. As a GE tier at dawn, we must take them down I confirmed, and jumping from under the desk, tried to attack the one that was closest to me, who instantly turned towards us blocking my punch with his sword, making it light itself all green, and suddenly a flash thrown me away followed by explosions, that came from under the floor, making me hit the wall, as I quickly pushed my hands forward creating a whirlpool out of air, that attacked two knights pushing them down. The other two quickly jumped to me, as I bar alien time crawled out of the hole created by me hitting the wall. The colorful wall was cut in half and shattered into pieces, as their swords glowed red she quickly gets up, in third of me and kicks the two knight away while jumping on one of their shoulder, and grabbing hold of its head, and ripping it. Stealing away its sword and smashes it into the night I slowly stops glowing so does the sword. While I used this opportunity, and crushing another knight's dark armor inserted my hand inside it, gathering my energy, releasing it inside making the knight explode, shattering the knight into pieces. The remaining two jumped far away, and stabbed their swords into the floor making it purple, as suddenly we felt our energy was being drained. The draining began to be intense making me quickly jump towards the two knights and slash them with my energy sword I created, breaking them in half and ensuring the drain had stop I looked at Dawn smiling. As EITS over dear, come o uta I walked over towards her and smiled. She tilt her head as she starts to approach me while touching her jacket and tickling her rat. As e while you really like this little low NEA I expressed smiling seeing how the girl happily played with her pet as don't let your guard thought the summoner is still here hiding somewhere I warned Don while myself scouting the area for any traces of enemies aura. As e wh however behind this is doing a good JLBA I expressed yet again looking at the devastated office kneeling near some knights remains taking into my posse she and a golden plate with the eye of the beholder erected into it. As someone has a throughout out knowledge of the things in this world I expressed yet again looking at the golden shiny plate, reading the ancient symbols that constituted the spell that was used to construct these knights. They weren't normal summoners, but dimensional spirits given a holy armor a feat of magic only a very skilled dark force user could use suddenly a lighting flash brightening up the office e as a girl appeared in front of the window and a dark knight that attacks the girl. She falls to the ground unconscious while me and Dawn tried to kill the knight. When she awoke violently took the knife, and killed the knight, and then licked the blood from her wounds. 
I walked towards the new girl looking at her smirking as e okay now who the hell are you I asked while trying to make myself look cold and very powerful, not knowing whether the newcomer was our enemy or a new ally Dawn tilted her head as she glanced at the new girl and back to me then simply shrugged her shoulders, are you alright? She asked the girl. I walked to her as well while pushing Dawn out of the way, looking back at her and giving her a sign to fall back as he be careful Dawn, this girl was the one that summoned these knights, but here's a mystery, why did the knights attack her I wondered, and later understood the new girl didn't control her powers yet. As he oh my head said, the girl as she saw the corpses of the knights. Then she threw the knife down and frightened away. As he mm my name is Misa, and I lost it while looking for land of demon souls, then I saw that a knight's attack you, and I can help you as she answered as Dawn puffed her cheeks, or maybe she just dropped by. She said, while looking the girl again making me left while kneeling down to this new girl, and healing her wounds, clausely observing her buddy I was a bit astonished at my findings, and looked back at Dawn as he e why Dawn can I look at your body I smiled. As he M.I.S.A. did you meet anyone in the land of demons souls I asked Misa, while walking closer to Dawn, and looking at her buddy finding the same symbols on the buddies of both girls. As well there's Sir Ali a mystery to be unraveled here here I proclaimed sitting on the floor as looking at the two girls curiously Dawn tickled the rat while looking at me, see I told you so and quickly turning to Misa, as she raised my hand towards her, niece, to meet Y.A. She said while smiling Misu arose from the floor, took the knife again, smiled and said, and to me is nice to meet you I looked at both sighting as I was right too, the girl's body was forced to summon the knights, while she herself was in some kind of trance, did you know you have dark alchemy symbols, on your buddies? You were experimented on, can you recall how did you find yourself here? Both of you I looked at the girls curious about the answers she could give me, while it was awfully quiet the reddish smoke was gone now, and everything looked very calm. Meanwhile Misu again noticed that a bloodthirsty knight approached, without saying a word she grabbed the knife, and cut the knight into parts. As calm yourself and they will stop appearing the I smiled to Misa, as the knight slowly evaporated to dust as they are here to protect you Misa, you're the one creating them I explained looking at the girl with amusement, as she fought off her creation's dawn glance, at us as she settled down on desk, I am just a normal girl Tilda she said, while sighing. As a yo you might have been a normal girl, but you both were experimented on by powerful alchemists, look around this skyscraper is in reality a magical complex structure that was to emulate a normal industry complex, someone created this building for a reason, and made it abandoned to have it appear as a ruin in which outcasts dwell. now my question is why? What's going on? And the only thing I know is that you two somehow hold in yourselves the keys to understanding this mystery I explained looking at Dawn, and then back at Misa. When Misa looked at me and Dawn her vampire's eyes were blood red, felling that she haven't hardly any forces, Misa looked at ghostly silver moon, and she said I want blood. And then evaporated, and what near a haunted castle then she entered the palace, and the faltering ghost, until she saw a vampire, who puts it about to come to her. She followed him finally could not resist, and started to drink blood from him. Then appeared the other vampires, and attacked Misa. She screamed, and tried to kill them, but the vampires were too much however she took a strong knife, and killed them in the most cruel way then she left we looked curiously as Misa disappeared, and I quickly grabbed Dawn's hands as EDAW and we need to get out now. Someone's called her back which means they know we're here, and not part of whatever they're doing I explained quickly to Dawn as she tugged my hand, but what about Misa? We got to help her right? She said quickly. I sighed and looked at her a bit sadly, I was worried about Misa as well, but were also aware of the danger her unstable state caused as I cannot trace her existence anywhere it's as if she evaporated, or entered back to Achillean, we cannot follow her it would be too dangerous, and if she appears she might be brainwashed I explained Dawn pouted, but she is still a part of us, besides it would be okay she sniffed the air a little, she seems near though, let's go. Meanwhile the floor was being encrypted with dangerous explosive spells, while hieroglyphic images were visible appearing even in the office we were standing, the magical bombs were armed. As a while you know where she is I asked her surprised, as the situation started to get serious. Hoping that this situation would resolve quickly, our time was running away. On the floors and the corridors outside the office green pentagrams and symbols appeared. 
The spell's interface warned about an impending explosion giving us only 10 minutes of time. The action should be imminent, if there was any action possible. The symbols that appeared in different colors were also visible in the office. Some of them were, the Eye of Beholder, Dancing Tribal Man with Spheres, Three Circles the symbols of all impede, and symbolizations of drugs and medicine. A probable message from God himself, who used this spell's interface, to communicate with us, perhaps give a warming and a thought that hallowed my head, as if Alpha were speaking to me. In fact it was her voice which said this inside my head as I are not aware of what your hands can create here. I looked at my hands quickly, and closed my eyes offering a prayer to God. Intensively concentrating on things that my hands could create, moving them forward golden springs came out of them, pointing right into the next dimension, and untangling Misa, quickly pulling them back we saw a dark hole opening and Misa fall out of it. As ye are you all right I asked her dumb nodded her head, as she threw some light blue powder over the spell, this ought to stop it a while. She said, while pulling me out of her way. The spells indeed stopped, and everything returned to normal for a while. I kneeled down towards Misa, and took her into my arms. Holding her firmly I waked out the office. As in Sir Dibla you stopped the spells. Let's move fast we rushed out of the corridors, and into the maze hoping to escape and then followed me, as we quickly entered the maze. I will let you. Dawn said, as she took the lead and quickly made her way out of the place making me run behind her while holding Misa, who started to awake as a while you know this maze I asked a bit surprised while loud noises were heard behind us and the floor shaked. The bombs went off according to plan on the nearby corridors, and we barely avoided the flames ourselves. As the maze started to explode, the walls crumbled making us go right through them as dark MYST fold everything maybe, maybe not. Dawn just simply sighed, as she pulled us quickly out managing to get out of this maze, while a gust of wind came while the surrounding turned dusty. The wind itself was very black, and made an awful roar, pushing all of us into the walls, as I while holding Misa followed Dawn slowly, energy waves were released forcing us to duck as the blue waves roamed the area Misa, without saying anything lead us through the maze towards safety, and soon we got out Staffelli, with combined efforts of Dawn and Misa we found ourselves centering another staircase, and ducking down, as the floor finally exploded enabling us to see the bloody orange flames and feel the unbearable heat I looked at Dawn smiling exhausted as E.W.E. bar Ellie made it I admitted petting Dawn on her head. As let's go I commanded walking down the silver stairs looking into the darkness and the golden walls that surrounded us this made me wonder yet again about the place we were in. It was very dark with only stairs and walls shining while we walked awfully slowly carefully observing the environment. The sounds of the explosion overwhelmed everything, and, as we rushed we also allowed ourselves to witness this spectacle created by an enormous pressure combined with massive acceleration of heat, and literal decomposture of the metals used to build the floor, making the floor collapse, as we witnessed the shockwave that went through the entire building spreading the heat which was sucked in by the walls preventing the collapse of this structure. The metallic glass structure literally decomposed two atoms, in a way, that was simply too hard to describe, nothing like the things any one of you ever saw. Meanwhile above our current location in the depths of this mysterious skyscraper something evil was prepared. A tiny figure similar to a three-year-old child dressed in dark monk, like cloth was standing in front of me to cover cauldron, which produced some kind of blue smoke. And chanting spells he was observed by two priest-like figures, two old men dressed in both dark and white priest-like clothing holding silver canes, with huge white beards that almost touched the gray floor. The man dressed in dark regal cloth slowly pointed his silver cane forward making the area full itself with blue smoke creating incredible whirlpools, which started to come into the silver halls thrusting and encircling them, as the demon, that looked like a three-year-old child danced performing a very serious and powerful dark spell, creating lightings and tiny self-sustained explosions. Suddenly the structure exploded as columns started appearing. Growing out of the silverly gray floor, breaking it destroying the golden walls, as the white dressed old man waving his silver cane created a silver barrier protecting the three of them. A huge explosion leveled the floor, that was located at the top of this skyscraper making the dark war pools clean the debris in few seconds creating place for an ancient temple, that was being placed. Gale mouth temple that was located in Echelion was being brought by them into the skyscraper fusing itself with it as red lightings modeled the reality. Gale mouth was seen observing his faithful servants from above on his golden throne. 
Both the white-dressed man and the dark-dressed man had golden ornaments on their cloths. These were the proof of their allegiance to the Dark Lord and his evil ambition. They slowly walked to the stairs and kneeled down giving his respect to their master, who with his fateful shadow birds at the head of his throne observed them from above. Dressed in terrifyingly dark cloths with golden serpent-like ornaments, he moved his hands forward and arose from his seat as elite be the celebrities of life and death begun. My faithful servants, we begin our march towards Rene Wall of this world. Darkness and deception created by the lust has reached its culmination. Requiring our assistance in rectifying the sins of these that lived before us. Human FOLY has created a place without any proportions. Desires of many is mocked by these that dared to take God's place. It is time to remind them that no one can escape the terrible powers of death. We shall open the path to self-exploration. Destroying the forms that rotted over eons of years, this is the time to take stand against everything that was created by decay. Human and eternal worms must be extinguished in order to prepare room for the new to rise. Let the dance of the Eternals finally begun a he proclaimed sitting on his golden throne as above him billions of eyes opened in the dark ceiling, these eyes looking as if they were watching from another dimension opened to document the tragedy that was to begun. The two men stood up and the white breast man walked two steps forward bowing down in respect to ZMY Master. The rising star of darkness we are ready to perform all the duties requested by your desire. This holy structure created for you by our magic will become the instrument of your divine will. My master we are waiting for your blessings take charge in shaping this new world. The white rest man kneeled down on the golden steps as Iwayo you did a great honor constructing this special instrument of my will. White master, dark master, and Blimo I give you my blessings to carry out this divine task. Go forward my faithful man, go forward carrying the task that is required by the universe. Let no one stop you, let no one become a diversion in these asks only a swift conclusion will make the world tremble. This is the time my servants move forward with no delay a yelled gale a mouth giving out his ceremonial blessings to his faithful servants. Who were observing him standing below the golden stairs as he stood near his throne, while small green hieroglyphs appeared at his feet, shining very brightly as Gale a mouth smirked, being intoxicated with his mad ambitions, while White Master was feeling dignified, because all Gale a mouth's creations thought of themselves as superior to the beings that roamed the world before them, thinking of themselves as new kings of the world, they graciously followed every command given to them by the Dark Lord. Not knowing Gale a mouth had no intention of sharing his authority with anyone. Small fountains of green energy were released from the stairs souring to the ceiling lighting up brightly the area. Creating a spiral and joining together creating a DNA sequence, some joining parts became dark on they rise making Gale a mouth smile as ETHE foundations had been corrupted, the world's established boundaries cannot oppose our will, universe is whole with body and mind, breaking it up apart is our only option, in order to establish a new structure, or to abandon all forms partial shifts in clarity are not an ought, observe the decay of this world our poison is in effect. The sickness creates effects in bodies of all living things. This sickness, greed, and envy, lust, and mistrust will bring up the seeds to fulfill the collapse. The downfall is inevitable and deserved, for such world really deserves to disappear. There should be no mourning and no cries for the world that gives birth only to pain and suffering, which uses lies to deceive the weak. This world that dared to take away my hearth will burn in ashes in front of my divine power. That is the will of the dark god Gale a mouth explained his happiness Gale a mouth looking closely at his servants who did not dare to interrupt his holy proclamation of hate and anguish the reasons for this trial wouldn't be discovered so easily however. Gale a mouth had a very dark secret in his cold hearth and it was this secret that created that unbearable pain agony lead him to lose his mental stability and the knowledge he discovered created a sentiment that lead him to go fully insane. While his actions appeared logical to him, in reality they were delusions created by his deluge in Wall State. Would anyone guess that it was him who needed to be saved from himself just as anyone else? The question is how to save someone that's subdued in true madness? What if madness is just another state of reality for chaos coexists with order? That's how it was and that's how it will be.
Even Gale a mouth with all his hate couldn't change this. The only one thing he was able to create was merely a spectacular event and a great trial for myself. All of us who survived could only become stronger after that. Poor Gale a mouth, for it's one of these truths he had no idea of. The darkness filled the place as the young boy known as Dietrich opened huge golden doors that were the entrance to Gale Amouth's sanctuary. Who decided to test his puppet in a small show game? T.S.K. to Pickle. Sneered a haunting voice from behind the smoke. No shadow or silhouette. But Gale Amouth knew of him and the voice of Gale Amouth. One of the men in suits fired a shot without orders from Gale Amouth. The man taking pride in his unspoken loyalty as he took aim towards the source and apparent direction of the voice. Clank. Fizz you. The man's massive buddy fell forward. His face strewn with blood. The bullet had backfired, ripping through his neck. And I thought the doorman was intimidating. The voice chuckled. By now the smoke had cleared, and out from the shadows, a beaming face with golden hair laced on top of it peered out as if nodding to a neighbor on a normal Sunday morning. He let himself out of the conchelling shadows, and looked, if not casual then definitely innocent. His shadows massive, as if of an athlete. His chin with a stubble growing. But those eyes were definitely harboring huge traces of the very divine phenomena, innocence. Such was the, the choice of Gail a mouth. And he took pride in what he thought he had spared a second longer thinking of his choice, not a person. The young man was someone when you looked at you could feel you could trust. He wasn't a hypocrite, oh no in fact he had successfully weighed his ratio more towards good deeds, so that he may steal more points in what the world defined as a good person. He seemed the kind that would close into himself in an embryo, when depressed, and make the other person blame him or herself for her apparent wrongdings. In their eyes this person could do no wrong. What up, Yoda? He lingered his gaze towards the monk, like midget. New York working out for you? He was greeted by a grunt from the small creature. The young man took this as something of concern and said, as he moved lightly towards the tall glass, that acted as the walls of the room, HMMIC. Hollywood kicked you out. Already bored by his own wit, he moved on. He bent down his face hovering over the dead man's body. Fresh blood still gushed out. The blonde's mouth as if drawn dizzily toward the action, slacked open and his fingertips swimed in the pool of blood. And just when the stained hand drew apart, Dietrich. Boomed Gale a mouth from beyond the golden staircase. Dietrich's hand stopped in mid-distance, his eyes wide and bloodshot. As Gail Amouth's voice silenced the atmosphere, even the breaths of mortals in the room, it was broken by drops of blood dripping to the floor that were suspended in Dietrich's fingers. Dietrich didn't avert. He was busy. Busy looking longingly at something beyond his hand, something creeping like weeds in his head, and claiming his thoughts for their own vineyard. Are you aware that you are the only being I have to bother instructing properly? It sounds like a genuine compliment, he hadn't moved an inch. You aren't that deserving. So now the devil's into all that too. You know better than to argue with me. Yes I do. And yet you dare defy. Your Excellency I was created to live and warp to serve, since I can't warp back I have no other option. Dietrich moved. And in I any swift move was bowing. His hand on his chest master. A scary glint in his eyes. Gale a mouth looking at him enjoying his superiority over the boy, smiling, and looking towards his loyal subordinates. As very well a Gale a mouth started talking yet again preparing himself to make one of his speeches. As he I might forgive your sins boy, as long as you continue to loyally follow my orders, speak now and make it known to us, how did the mission in both New York and Hollywood go, was they lust and greed compare? 